Hi, everybody. This is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology. It's Friday, November 23rd. I hope you're all recovering from a nice Thanksgiving, and I uh, hope that the food comas weren't too bad. Um, I am sitting down today to make a recording that is meant to be a part of a series of recordings that I'll do, you know, spontaneously here and there looking at um, how to track the moon. So <clears throat> the basic reason I want to do this is because for those of you who are out there and would like to learn something about tracking the planets on your own, there's really no better place to start than the moon. Now, um, <clears throat> you're going to need a transit tracking program. So the best that I could recommend for you would be one of two different programs that you can get uh, on, your, um, on your phone, and I'll show you what those are. <clears throat> so uh, first of all, this is, let's see if I can get it up on the screen here. This is astrograph.com. Astrograph has a Black Friday sale. I work for them with, I write monthly horoscopes for them and uh, I have their program as well. It's a nice program. Um, but if you go to their apps and you look at time passages software for iPhone, if you have an iPhone, this is a really nice one. I don't actually believe they have it for Android yet or Galaxy or whatever other phone you have. Um, but you can also get it for your computer and track the transits this way every day. It's a really nice way to start learning how to track transits because it's very basic. Um, so you have to have some knowledge already of which planets are signified by which glyphs, have a basic working knowledge of the glyphs of the signs, and some a little bit of knowledge of birth charts <clears throat> in terms of how to look at them. But if you get a program like this, you can have the astro clock on, on your desktop and watch the transits moving. And that's a really helpful way, basically, of um, uh, learning to track transits and getting sort of better at it. Now, the other one that I'm going to show you is, um, let's see here. Uh, okay, so this one, if I can find it is for Android and it's called Astro Gold. Um, you will, let's see, here it is. Uh, it's on Google Play. You can get it Astro Gold right here. So this is the one I have on my phone. It's really nice. It's a simple way of tracking the transits again. It has a very simple, like where are the planets right now feature. Okay, so those are the two that I would recommend if you have an iPhone or not. And then another easy one that you can look at if you wanna track the planetary transits are if you just type in where are the planets right now, uh, the planets today, a view of, of live view of the solar system um, <clears throat> will pop it up on the screen. And um, is this the right site? Yeah. Uh, you'll have a view of where they are. And then um, if you click on astrology, Western astrology, <clears throat> you will um, have a list of the transits that are right there. This is kind of nice. You can uh, get a sense of where they are, where all the planets are within the signs. It's kind of cool. Another one that works really well are, is um, on Google. Let's see, where is it? Today's planets, theastrologer.com. And you'll see just a list, moon, Gemini, nine degrees, 20 minutes. And it just gives a list like that. And this is on theastrologer.com. I, I like it because it's just simple and easy. But at any rate, let's go back to our uh, main uh, chart view here. I use Solar Fire on my um, computer, which also gives me an astro clock like the one that you're looking at right now. I find it really helpful. All right, so all of that aside, Let's talk about tracking the moon, which is a really easy thing that you can do every day in order to not only learn about planetary transits, but um, you can get a sense of where all of the planets are every day and kind of memorize how fast they move or get a sense of how fast they move that's kind of living in your body. It becomes more intuitive. So if someone asks me at any given time, like where are all of the planets? Because I look at this every day and I have for years, I can tell you where any of the planets are at any given time. Maybe the moon is a little tricky because the moon's fastest, but I can tell you what sign the moon is in and what general phase of the moon cycle it's in or whatever. So um, this being said, uh, the most valuable thing when you're trying to learn how to track the planets for yourself is to see where the moon is moving, <clears throat> to see which aspects it's going to make. Remember two things that are important about the moon. One is that it is not an original light, it is a reflective light. And so the moon is thought of in ancient astrology as 
unlike a satellite that's going the fastest of any of the planets through the zodiac around in our sky, it's moving up above the ecliptic, it's moving down below the ecliptic, snaking around the path of the sun, and it's collecting, in a sense, gathering all of the effluences, all the, all the energies of the other planets, all the lights of the other planet, and it's gathering it and then disseminating it. The moon was thought to be the planet that's closest to the earth, earthly or terrestrial sphere and is uh, thought to minister to all of, the mat, uh, all of the matters of the earth. And so the moon is constantly making aspects, Ptolemaic aspects, Ptolemaic ancient aspects, the trine, the sextile, the opposition, the square uh, conjunction. It's making aspects to other planets. It's gathering their light and then it's disseminating it as it waxes and wanes. And it does so through the four cycles of its phases um, of its monthly uh, cycle. The four, the four phases, I should say, of its monthly uh, cycle. So as that's happening, um, basically in ancient astrology, we have the idea that everything, all of the changes that are happening in our lives here on earth from nature to our personal lives or the collective are constantly changing and unfolding. And the moon is a sort of mirror for those changes. So for example, in horary astrology, the moon is sort of the most basic prognosticator of the flow of events, what's going to happen and how it's going to flow along. So the moon is so important in this regard, and this is the biggest benefit of learning to track your transits every day. So I'm going to teach you something very, very simple about the moon. And that is this. First of all, when you pull up any chart and you look at the chart for a day, you want to know like, what is today going to be like? Look at the most immediate applications that the moon is making. Um, now, you have to know your aspects to, to do this. So if that's too advanced for you, then <clears throat> I highly recommend my uh, course for total beginners which is actually on sale right now through my Kickstarter. If you're a total beginner and some of what I'm saying right now is just total you know, Greek, uh, no pun intended, then uh, you might be interested in my um, course for total beginners, which is on sale for $300 right now through my Kickstarter. It's a four part class um, that you may really enjoy. Um, but at any rate, if you know your aspects a little bit, then here's what you do. You pop up the chart, you look, where is the moon? Okay, so right now the moon is at seven degrees of Gemini. And then what you want to do is you want to roll through all of your major Ptolemaic aspects and you want to look and see if the moon is going to connect by aspect in the next, say, eight degrees, but even more important would be within the next three degrees with any planet. If it's connecting by any kind of aspect within three degrees, uh, then we begin an interpretation. So let's look. Is it conjoining anything in Gemini? Nope. So not conjoining anything. The moon's not conjoining anything. So we eliminate that. How about square to anything? Well, yeah, the moon's moving into a square with Neptune. It's a little less than seven degrees off. It's, um, so uh, <clears throat> what about square to anything in Virgo? Nope. So nothing square over there. So, so far we have an applying square to Neptune for today's forecast. What else? Any, how about any sextiles? Anything in Leo that it's making a sextile to around seven degrees? Nope. How about in Aries around seven degrees? Nope. So no sextiles. How about trines? Anything around seven degrees of Libra? Nope, nothing near seven. How about anywhere near seven degrees of Aquarius. Well, we're not going to take into consideration the ascendant because this is just a random chart. We're looking for planets. So no, there's nothing, no trines. <clears throat> so the moon is not making any soon to be trines or sextiles. So far, all we've got is a square to Neptune. All right. Well, what about oppositions? Ah, interesting. The moon's just separating from Jupiter and moving towards an opposition with Mercury, and Mercury is retrograde. Okay, interesting. Mercury has also just recently separated from Neptune, so the two of them are in a square right now with one another. So, yeah, you know what? What does this make today? It makes today a kind of, kind of a Mercury retrograde and Neptune kind of day. Hmm, that doesn't sound very fun. Uh, <laughs> potentially, 
uh, not very fun, especially when the moon is moving into hard aspects. So the square is of the nature of Mars. The opposition is the nature of Saturn. Moon is in a Mercury ruled sign. So first of all, you can start off by just saying what kind of day is today? It's a Mercury kind of day because moon's moving through Mercury's masculine air sign of Gemini. So maybe a day where the mind is busier or there's more bustle. Hope you're not out on Black Friday doing anything. Um, the moon is going to oppose Mercury, which means that there's a more, a more difficult aspect coming up between the moon and Mercury. But moon is in Mercury's sign. So what does that mean? Well, you want to be careful of a feisty customer service, for example, when you're out today, or anything where there's an emotional and mental form of communication, and it's rushed or hurried, or something might melt down or break, or something doesn't quite work right, uh, or it's just a little bit tricky, or you're feeling the impulsive desire to shop or spend or buy something technology related, be very careful of that. <clears throat> So impulsive purchases that are um, maybe like, for example, like last night, my wife was like, I really want to get a new phone. And I was like, aha, let's wait. <laughs> let's just, let's wait a little bit, <clears throat> at least until the moon is um, in a better aspect with Mercury, right? Just simple stuff. Um, or uh, what and what to speak of the applying square with Neptune, which can be a little confusing. So this is a day where you may not see everything clearly, you may not rationalize perfectly, you may not make sense of things, or you have to be careful of people that are, um, you know, trying to take advantage of you in any way, or um, where all the information isn't very, it's not totally clear or whatever. But this is a really good way to track planets, right? To track transits, excuse me, which is to just see where the moon is moving and see what it's contacting next and then get a sense for what's coming. Okay, so moon's going to oppose Mercury retrograde, which is combust the sun and in its detriment, and then square Neptune. So it's a Mercury-Neptune kind of day. So then, and I just went through some of the different significations like cloudy communication or not getting all the details right or miscommunication or misunderstandings, but also um, persuasion and maybe uh, the f fantasies and imagination or the topic of, um, uh, you know, mental and intellectual and emotional stuff being confused or a little choppy or dicey. All right. So even and I said customer service, because obviously the moon is also kind of uh, generally speaking can be a kind of a nurturer, but it's opposite Mercury, it's, it's which is debilitated. So communicating what you need or trying to help someone with what they need might be a little bit more challenging. You get the idea though, which is that you, um, if you have this in mind and you keep a journal, when I was first studying astrology and starting to write daily horoscopes, for example, um, before I made them public, for almost a year, I had a moon journal where I would write down what was going on and pick up a couple of the transits and not all of them because that can get overwhelming, but just whatever the most immediate were. And I would write them down and then I would write out some different kinds of interpretations and then I would just set it aside and forget about it and go through my day. There's a weird way in which omens and signs and symbols don't show themselves when we go searching for them. It's really a weird thing, but most of the time that's how it works. So you got to kind of write it down, take some notes, and then just kind of put it aside and go live your life. And then they'll show up. And when they do, what you're looking for in that moment is the kind of reflective space that you suddenly get. Whereas normally you might get caught up in the events, now you can reflect and you can go, oh, wow, moon opposite Mercury retrograde. Oh, wow, moon square Neptune. Oh my gosh, right? So I'm taking my daughter to see, for example, The Grinch, the new Grinch movie, which actually one of my friends works for Illumination. And so I'm also just a big fan of supporting his movies too. So uh, The Grinch is done by Illumination. So we're going to go see The Grinch this afternoon, a matinee. And I'm like, I'm anticipating like, hmm, what will happen? You know, what will, what will this be? What will this be like? Interestingly enough, just a couple of days ago, I was doing a video and I was talking about, oh, you know, Mercury, Neptune, you go to a movie and the reel breaks down and there's like puddles all over the floor and, and then, you know, so now I'm like, let's hope that I wasn't unconsciously forecasting my trip to see the Grinch with my daughter. We'll find out. But you get the idea. I hope that this was helpful. What I'm going to do 
in you know uh, different future um, episodes of this How to Track the Moon is basically just look at different tricks that I've learned over time for making this process a little bit more seamless, kind of introduce some basic ideas here and there and give you always some examples from whatever's happening in, in the sky with the moon on any given day. So this is something that I'm very passionate about and that's why I chose to do this. And I hope that all of you enjoy it. Meanwhile, um, I wanted to let you all know, I can't, I have to do something obligatory for Black Friday or Cyber Monday or whatever the heck these things are called nowadays. Um, all of my courses are for sale through my Kickstarter. We start a brand new one year online natal chart certification course next Saturday. It meets on Saturdays from noon to 2 p.m. Eastern time. That is $300 off if you donate through my annual fundraiser right now. Um, you can also find my horary astrology course, my advanced year two course, and bundled packages where you can get two of those three courses or all three of them for a pretty ridiculous discount. I always do this around this time of year. Um, so, uh, and then there's readings. There's year ahead readings from, I, I will record you a tarot reading or an I Ching reading or an astrology reading and stuff like that. So I will put the Kickstarter link into the, uh, the uh, description, the, the box that comes with your YouTube video description. I'll put it in there for you guys. I hope that you guys can pick some of that up. I'd love to see some of you in class soon. And I hope again that this little episode of How to Track the Moon was interesting. All right, take care, everyone.